From Hollywood, Instant Postum brings you the new Beulah show starring Amanda Randolph as... Beulah, the all-around girl. (laughs) I'm the same size all around. (laughs) Yes, from Hollywood, it's a new Beulah show brought to you transcribed by good-tasting Instant Postum. Love that Postum. Enjoying life is something all of us want to do, and the first requirement for that is health. Nobody has fun when their nerves are upset, when they're feeling edgy and out of sorts, all dragged out from loss of sleep. If you suffer from these complaints, it may be that you have coffee nerves. Yes, coffee nerves and restless nights caused by caffeine in coffee or tea. Of course, many folks can handle caffeine without ill effect, but it is a drug that affects lots of people, perhaps you. Well, you can banish coffee nerves by switching to Instant Postum. Because Instant Postum is absolutely caffeine-free. It lets you sleep. So start now to get the most out of life. Don't let caffeine steal your rest. Switch from coffee and tea to delicious Instant Postum. Get a jar of Instant Postum this week at your grocer's. Devoted followers of our plot situations may recall without too great difficulty that Beulah's boyfriend, Bill, was all set to build a rumpus room onto the home of Beulah's employers when an unexpected business reversal caused the Hendersons to abandon the project altogether. Right, Mr. Jacobs. Unfortunately, Bill had already invested some of his own money in building materials. Right again. And that leaves poor Bill in a hole without his even picking a shovel or a pig. Mm, At the moment, Beulah is about to enter Bill's fix-it shop. Hello, Billy Boy. Well, baby, this is a surprise. <laughs> I was just coming back from the market, and I thought I'd drop in. Well, I'm glad you stopped by, honey. I want to show you something I got yesterday when I thought I was going to get that building job from the Innocents. You mean all that lumber right on the side of the building? No, no, no. What I'm talking about is right over here in the corner. Yeah? Oh, just feast your eyes right over there, honey. Huh? Now, ain't that a beauty? Yeah, it certainly is, Bill. It's I knew gorgeous. You'd be... I knew you'd be as crazy about it as I am. I certainly am, honey. What is it? Oh. <laughs> well, woman, that's a genuine all-metal deluxe drill press. Just what I've always wanted. Well, I hope you two will be very happy together. Yeah. What do you do with a thing like this anyway? You drill holes. Any size holes you want, I'll drill them. Oh, I see. How much did you pay for it? Well, I got it on sale for $87.50. You mean to stand there and tell me you paid $87 for a machine that don't do nothing but drill holes? $87.50. Bill, I got a flash for you. This machine will never drill a hole as big as the one you got in your head. <coughs> oh, now, baby, that's the wrong attitude to take. Listen, William, you're gone and spent all the money you had in the world on lumber for a job that you haven't even got. And then you turn around and squander more money on a silly machine to bore holes in it. Now, don't get excited, honey. Don't get excited. I can always return to lumber and get my money back. Well, you better. And one more thing. Get busy and start drilling yourself four or five hundred assorted holes with that machine. What for? Because you're going to return that thing, too. You might as well have a big supply on hand. Oh, no, honey. (laughs) Honestly, Bill, I don't know what would come of you if I didn't keep my eye on you. And now, before you do any more foolish buying, come walk me home. Oh, let's don't walk back, baby. That'll take half hour or more. I can get you there in ten minutes on my motorcycle. No. Mm-mm. Be quicker if we walked. How'd you figure? Well, we may get there in ten minutes on your motorcycle, but it'll take another hour and a half to pry me out of the sidecar. <laughs> That you, Miss Alice? No, just me, Beulah. Oh, hello, Donnie. Would you like some milk and cookies? No, thanks, Beulah. I don't think so. In fact, I probably won't want any milk and cookies for a long time. Hmm, what's the matter, Donnie? You usually drink about a half a quart of milk and eat up a box of cookies every day about this time. Well, that's just it. Cookies and milk run into money. I want to try and save Dad as much money as I can. On account of we're so poor now. So poor? What gave you that idea? Well, Dad lost that big business deal, and we can't afford to have the new rumpus room. Oh, bless your heart, Donnie. That don't mean your dad is flat broke, you know. 
I'll admit he's no Rockefeller, but I think he can afford to keep you in milk and cookies. Now, sit down and drink this up and nibble on these ginger snaps. Well, okay, Beulah, just this time. <sighs> but my heart won't be in it. Well, never mind your heart. Just get your teeth in it. <laughs> you know, Donnie, a boy as young as you are shouldn't bother himself with worrying about such things as money. Money doesn't mean a thing. It doesn't? Not a thing. I never worry about money. Gee, Beulah, I'm glad you told me that. You are? Well, yeah, as long as you don't care anything about money, me and Sandy want to go to the movies so you can lend us a buck. Well, what do you know? <laughs> Love that boy. <laughs> Bueller, I think you might start dinner now. Mr. Henderson should be home soon. Oh, it's already started, Miss Alice. Oh, good. Where's Donnie? I haven't seen him since I got back. Well, there's a double feature at the Bijou this afternoon. Oh, fine. I imagine he's right between Roy Rogers and Tyrone Power. Mm, I'd give a lot to be in that spot myself. <laughs> I hope he remembers to get home in time for dinner. Oh, he'll be home in time. They closed down the popcorn machines at 5.30 so they can refuel for the night shows. <laughs> Where'd Donnie get money for a matinee, anyway? This morning he was complaining to me he was down to his last nickel. Well, I guess you might say he got it through strategy, Miss Alice. Strategy? Yes, sir. He strategized me right out of a dollar bill. <laughs> Oh, that Donnie. Sometimes I think that boy's going to grow up to be a confidence man. He's got a good start. He's already a confidence boy. <laughs> oh, dear. I certainly wish things had gone well enough so we could have gone ahead with that rumpus room we all wanted so much. Me too, Miss Alice. Bill sure could have used the work. Yes. Isn't it a shame money's so important? Uh-huh. I was just telling Donnie something along the same lines this afternoon before he made a liar out of me. Well, I suppose it happens to everybody, though. Sooner or later, money just seems to get into your blood. Well, I'm sure ready for a little transfusion myself. <laughs> <laughs> We're all a little anemic around here. Do you think there's enough peas, Bueller? I think so. Okay, now what do you need? The rice? Yes. You know, Miss Alice, I was thinking after my little talk with Donnie, maybe we could cut down a little on household expenses and that way maybe save enough to pay for the rumpus room. Oh, Beulah, that'd take a lot of cutting down. I don't see how we could possibly do it. Well, we might save quite a bit just on food alone. On food? How? Stop eating the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure somebody could make a million dollars if he'd just discover a cheap substitute for food. Of course we'd have to have something to eat, but we could raise our own vegetables. I'm afraid we've never had much luck raising vegetables, Beulah. I don't know about that, Miss Alice. If you remember, during the war, I had one of those victory gardens. Yes, that's right. But do you really think that was a success? We won the war, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't argue with you there. Well, now, that takes care of the rice. Now what? Oh, that's about all, I guess, except peeling some onions. But I can do that. No, I'll help. Oh, really, Miss Alice? I can do it all right. No, let me peel some onions, too. Maybe I'll feel better about the rumpus room if I have a good cry. Okay. <laughs> here's an onion and here's a knife. Okay, thanks. Ooh. Oh, this onion really is strong. Yeah. My mom once told me that when you're peeling onions, put a little potato on the end of the knife and you won't cry. Oh. Does that work? Works fine for me. But the poor potato cries his eyes out. <laughs> <laughs> well, the potato has nothing on me. Look at my eyes. Mm. You certainly are tearful. I wonder if onions cry when they peel people. <laughs> I don't know. I've never seen an onion peel a people. <laughs> I mean, person. Uh, maybe we better stop peeling for a while, huh? Oh, dear. After all... Remember the Johnstown flood? <laughs> I haven't cried like this since the last Betty Davis picture I saw. Yeah. I'm all through with my onions, Miss Alice. Yes, I'm through with mine, too, Beulah. Uh, would you hand me that face towel, please? Yeah, here, here you are. Oh. I better get a bath towel for myself. <laughs> Hello? Anybody home? Yes, dear, we're out here in the kitchen. Okay, sweetheart. Uh. Well, hello, everybody. Hi. What's going on here? Huh? Why all the tears? It's nothing, Mr. Harry. Nothing? No. Alice, honey, you're crying. Both of you are crying. Oh, no, it's nothing.
nothing, no, dear. No, no, now, come we on. Just... Well, now, don't, please, don't try to hide anything from oh, me. honey, I'm not. That's right, Mr. Harry. There's nothing the matter at all. Nothing the matter at all. That, yeah. People just don't cry for no reason at all. Women do. <laughs> really, darling, there's nothing to get excited about. Beulah and I were, were discussing the rumpus room, and I was helping her oh, with dinner. Oh, so that's it, huh? Uh-huh. The that's rumpus what? room, huh? What? Why, Alice, honey, I, I had no idea in the world it meant so much to you. Oh, oh no, dear. That Don't be silly. Well, that's not it. <laughs> now, never you mind, though, honey. You can just dry your eyes now, because we're going to have that room after all. What? Really, Harry? Really? Hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, this morning I got a call from the city engineer's office. They want to buy that whole tract of land over on the east side. The whole thing? Every lot. Hot dog with mustard. <laughs> you see, uh, the idea is the tract's going to be a part of the new highway the city's building. Yeah. And they'll pay just what we've been asking for it. The deal's practically set. Oh, darling, that's wonderful. Oh, oh, I think it's just terrific. And, Beulah, another thing. You can call Bill and tell him to get started just as soon as possible. Hot dog with mustard and relish. But easy on the onions. (laughs) In the theater or at the movies, you can usually spot the villain right away. But in everyday life, it isn't that easy. Take Mr. Coffee Nerves, for example. He's a real villain, but he's usually disguised as sleeplessness, fidgety nerves, a tired, dragged-out feeling. Don't let Mr. Coffee Nerves fool you. Get rid of him fast. (laughs) That makes Postum a hero, all right. Because Postum gives that Mr. Coffee Nerves the old heave-ho. There ain't nothing in Postum to keep you from sleeping all night long. Besides, that good taste of Postum's, it gets you. Yes, Beulah Postum is the answer. And remember, just because many people do drink coffee or tea without harm, it's no sign that you can. Don't take a chance on caffeine. Switch to delicious Instant Postum today. Drink Instant Postum instead of coffee or tea for just ten days. The results will speak for themselves. <laughs> Now the building project is on again. It won't even make Bill happy to hear the news. Now he can keep his drill press and drill all the holes he wants. Hmm. I wonder if I gave him this old gold locket of mine, could he drill a hole in it? Of course, it would ruin the locket, but it sure would make a nice wedding band. <laughs> <laughs> Ever watch a child playing grown-up? Youngsters love to do it. And here's a hot and hearty mealtime beverage that lets them be grown-up at the table, too. It's Instant Postum, the grown-up drink that's safe for the whole family. Good-tasting Instant Postum contains no caffeine, no drugs of any kind. It's the safe drink that lets you sleep. Why don't you make Instant Postum your all-family drink? You've been listening to The Beulah Show, brought to you transcribed from Hollywood by delicious Instant Postum. The Beulah Show is produced and directed by Stephen Hayes and was written this week by Hal Cantor, Arthur Julian, and Howard Leeds. Music is by Gordon Kibbe. This is Johnny Jacobs speaking. (laughs) 